Take me back to high school and I'll pay attention to letters. So I want to learn more about letters. Unless you weren't a swank homage, then you know what anagrams are, rearranging the letters to spell other words. But if you try anagramming in the real world, that is, leaving the computer world of fantasy letters and using real life letters, then you become dissatisfied with merely rearranging, and you want to do things like flip letters. So speaking of jaw jams, uh, you could rearrange the letters of bechamel to create chewable. And this again flips that M and the W. And actually, in English, it seems that the M and W are the only good pair of letters that you can get by flipping, at least for capital letters. And so, back to computer world, where I have an inexhaustible supply of lowercase letters, we see that by flipping and fiddling, I can turn a P into a D, and an N becomes a U. And speaking of tofu fonts, we're going to talk a little bit about custom fonts for this in a bit. And uh, B and Q are interchangeable, and these are the only three pairs. So look, unless you tolerate rotting walls, when making anagrams, you should allow rotating letters. But is there more we can do? For example, an E resembles an F, except that it has this extra little bit here. So let's make an F by cutting that off. It's just plastic. And uh, like cutting the horn off a unicorn, now we have a horse, or capital F. Now, when actually anagramming, I have this leftover piece, and I can't just throw that away. Uh, it's not very useful except to make an F into an E, or an O into a Q. Now, cutting up E's and Q's isn't that useful, because there aren't a lot of words with both F's and Q's in them. But I can think of one, and hogwashed becomes finally solving this mystery. Come on. Fuhudu gods. This is, of course, not to the limit, so let's go back to computers and lowercase letters. I like lowercase letters for this because there's a lot more similarity in the letter shapes. In fact, in letter form design, it's traditional to begin designing your font by drawing this word, or sort of word, Hamburger Fontziv, with the idea that these first few letters contain a lot of the elements that will be used throughout the font. This is one of the reasons I don't like this. I actually think that the letter that you start drawing first has such a big impact on the design of the font, which I guess is the whole point of this, that you shouldn't always start with, with the letter H. Otherwise, you're only going to get H fonts. Still, it does make a certain amount of sense to start with the easy letters and these repeated elements and save the tricky ones and the fun ones like G and S, which is the worst letter. Sorry, I'm still mad about this. This is obviously made up. There is no way that this is like the best order of letters, uh, like some statistical thing like RSTLNE. Because, first of all, you've got the word hamburger right there, which is super suspicious. But then, way worse, you have font, which has got to be like, this is made up by typographers, it's got to be like one of the top words on their minds all the time. We've already learned that we can use tofu instead of font. It's like the same letter shape, so let's make this tofu burger. Okay, rant over, back to the matter at hand. We want to know what letters we can break down or break apart in order to create other letters. An easy one is B, which we can carve an O off of, leaving us with an L. And if you take an L and an O, you can also make a D, or a Q, or a P. So now instead of just rotating, which turns a D into a P, all four of those are interchangeable, plus we've got L and O in the mix. The letter L is pretty basic, but it's useful to split that into two pieces, each of which is the height of the letter I, which shape appears as a component of lots of other letters. We'll also need to consider the dot on the I to be its own letter piece, which also appears in a J. To finish the J, we just need this hook piece here, which also appears in letters such as F. And of course, we continue like this for all of the letters. Some letters don't have any breakdown, like C here is primitive. And uh, S, which I've decried before, you, you might think you could make it out of C's, and you kind of can, but it ends up being way too big. So we'll also consider that one primitive. Other letters, like this fancy stacked G, you can kind of make out of other letters, or you could consider them primitive. But a better approach is to just use a simpler grade school shape. Here, this child's G is made from some of the same parts as a J, minus the dot, but plus a C. So this does depend on the font that you're using, but I was able to get it down to the following set of letter pieces. The primitive letters C, E, O, R, and S, and then these letter pieces that we've seen, dot, tick, and hook. 
I know it looks like you could break these down further like that E, but it's definitely harder than it looks. The main problem being that in order to use a letter piece in one place and another simultaneously, it needs to be just the right size and shape. Like the Y looks too tall when I assemble it from these drawings. It's quite a fun exercise if you like making fonts or doodling. I really like fun, so I made my own font editor, which allows me to be very exact about this and computational. In one mode, I design the basic letter shapes, or what I call atoms, that are used to make up all the letters. Then I assemble the letters themselves. K is made up of four tick shapes. I can go back and change an atom, here ruining it, and then see how that's reflected in all the letters in which it's used. And font making is a very iterative process, so you gotta test out how the words look as you're going. And then you get really mad because you didn't build kerning support. So there goes another afternoon of your life as you write all that code and then manually set the distance for 26 squared pairs of letters. And now at least it's tolerable. Generalized kerning is more interesting computationally than you might think. I'm going to come back to that. Anyway, now that this is all inside the computer's uh, brain RAM, we can start making some anagrams. It's no longer right to call these anagrams. Uh, that word is already taken. I considered anaglyph, which is like a Greek word that frequently is used to mean letter, but that is used for this kind of 3D glasses. No idea why. So I decided on anagraph from anag, which means anagram, and raf, which is rotate and pluck fragments. So this program will be an anagraph generator, and let's talk about how that works. It's not really that complicated. Every word has a unique decomposition into the atoms that make it up, we just take the letters and then the atoms that constitute those and basically count them. For YouTube here, I have one each of C, E, O, three R's, eight ticks, and one hook. If I sort those in some order and then use counts instead of repeating letters, I get a unique code for each word. And I can perform this process for all words and get their code. If another word has the exact same code, then it's an anagraph, like for example here, rocketry. I can also make multiple word anagraphs by finding a single word that's a subset of the code I'm working with. Here the word fun has two R's, five ticks, and one hook. Just subtract those from the counts of the word YouTube, and I'm left with some other code, and then I can continue from there. Here I find that the word alone has exactly those leftover characters, so fun alone is another anagraph. And I don't just try fun, I try all of the words that form a subset of those atoms. And I don't just stop at two words, of course. At every stage I try all of the words that have a subset. If I completely use up the letters, then that's an anagraph. If I don't use them all, I continue and try again recursively. Ah, uh, I just made myself mad again thinking about recursion in a pop culture context. By complaining, I know I'm giving some people the ultimate troll weapon against me. But I can't resist. We need to talk about the movie Inception. It's a fine film. It does contain dreams within dreams and the phrase, we have to go deeper. But Inception, the word Inception, does not mean recursion or nesting or induction. It has nothing to do with those things. It's a normal English word. It means creation or beginning. And in the movie, it's used in exactly the normal sense of that word. And it's not subtle or subtext at all. They go inside people's dreams in the movie to make them think that they've come up with ideas. That's the inception. And it's like the whole point of the movie. Ah, anyway, let's look at those anagraphs. By the way, I'm kind of curious to know if this font looked fishy to you at the beginning of the video. It's the same one I've been using the whole time, and I think some of the letters look a little funny due to the way they're constructed. And speaking of fun alone, uh, one more technical topic here. Remember when I said that we would break down a word into the unique decomposition? Well, this only works if a letter breaks down only one way. But previously in this video, I told you that B could be broken down into L-O, and I also showed you it breaking down into L-C. I think both of these make sense, and it's a reasonable variant of the problem. I could also have the rule that says O can be made up of two C's, and depending on the font, that might be possible. And now we have ourselves a real pickle. First of all, the algorithm I described before doesn't work. But far worse, this problem is now at risk of not being possible at all. So what if I take this B and I split it into LO using this first rule up here? Then using rule three, I can split that into CC. And then using rule two, I could take one of those C's and put it back onto the L to create a B. But now I'm back where I started, except I have a leftover C. And I could just keep doing that to create an infinite number of leftover Cs. So I have to be careful about what rules I actually allow if I want this problem to be easily solvable. 
In fact, consider a related problem where I'm allowed to rewrite letters like this, but I can't rearrange them as in anagrams. I call this the kerning problem. That problem is actually unsolvable in the sense that with arbitrary rules, there's no computer program that could tell whether one word can be kerned into another word using those rules. That's kind of surprising, and so I was going to explain in this video uh, why that is. Uh, but my editorial board decided that that was too boring for this 10-minute uh, video. So there's another video, and it's uh, 51 minutes long, and it's like a computer science lecture slash sleep aid. But if you're interested in this stuff, check it out. I explain all the details. I also show why the anagraphing problem is, in fact, solvable, even if you have rules like this one that allow for infinite Cs. But anyway, since I built each letter out of atoms explicitly, each does have a unique decomposition, which makes this problem easy in this case. Now, once you have a pair of anagraphs, uh, you have to do a little bit of work to animate between them. And I could have easily wasted a whole additional day uh, optimizing this so that you know letter pieces didn't collide with one another as they moved around. Uh, sort of self-driving characters problem. But it looks fine, and I didn't want to die of old age while working on this video. By the way, I realized the main use of this technology is to malign things by rearranging their names into something unflattering. And it's a lot easier to find unflattering things if we uh, break down letters into something even more primitive than these shapes like, say, pixels. So let's wrap with a couple of those, like the letter S. Garbage letter. Ah, oh, this guy again. Uh-oh. Wait a second. Cause I wanna learn more about lettuce. 